niggas living tax free like churches. Take a profit and purchase. Bitches, bodies, and purses. Both choppers and burgers, another funeral service. Uh, the revolution won't be televised. They selling lies. I sell out my lake of my niggas on the corner with pie. Collecting new paper, not newspapers. Making moves, major, now them crackers got new neighbors. Uh, we shake them up, nigga. We give a fuck. Uh. This is As of Late Podcast. It's your boy Titus and Ding ding ding! Round two, we got Daenerys Ferrar. Uh, hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, we recording this time. Back in the scene, I got a recording. <laughs> I will have it saved. Yeah, it is a new year. Yeah, new recording, y'all. Yeah, we gonna hear it right. Come How on. you feeling today, brother? I'm wonderful. Tired, but I'm wonderful. Hey, we here, man. We yep. here. Thank yep. you for coming, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you coming, man. You know the city loves you, and it's always a pleasure to. Outside of this, just shoot the shit with you, man, and, and right. just catch up on things and, and see how you're doing, you know, outside of, you know, the artistry and stuff like that. You know, very rarely with the exception of like this podcast, when we do go back and forth, it's, it don't be nothing to do with music or anything no, like that. No, it's just not about at all. life and family and taking it from glory to glory. Right. You know? So, man, like pleasure to have you as always. Yes, man. sir. How has the family been? How has everything been going and in, coming into this 2023? They good, man. Everybody good, you know. Mm. Growing, getting big. Tribe getting big. Hey, man, getting big. It ain't growing in numbers, but no, that's what I meant. Tribe getting big, right? Like yeah, that literal like, yeah. big. Yeah, but mm. we ain't, we ain't grew in numbers. <laughs> he said, <"Ain't." laughs> he said, ain't no you about what you got? What you got? A starting five about what? Hell four? No. You about right there, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Hell you no! About, you about right no, there now? No, no, no. uh-uh. You put, said you a lot of weight on the scale. <laughs> I got three. Three all right, boys. all right, about yep. time for a girl, man. About oh, man. <laughs> God, hey. God, you probably well. be a you gonna be a good girl, dad. When that part, you I know what? I always felt that way. Mm-hmm. I always felt that way. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's in the cars this lifetime, but yeah. you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it. You know what's. <laughs> You go, you go bug out too. What? I had a dream you had a girl too. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow! From your mouth to God's ears. About, <laughs> this was about two years ago though, mm-hmm. and it was so vivid. It was so vivid, bro. I <laughs> I got on the gram and was like, I looked and was like, Yo, did this nigga have a daughter? Right, well, like, yeah. you ever had them dreams? It was like, you know, I had a dream where it's like I had a bunch of money and I woke up and I was sad because the money wasn't there. Mm. And I was like, dang, but it was so real, right, like yeah. the joint, like you yeah. felt the joint, like yeah. And it was just like that. I was like, man, like it might be happening in another dimension. You know, be. yeah. You no, know, that happens yeah. a lot of time. You know, everything dealing with frequency and um, right. You know, even from the radio to like dreams. You know, mm-hmm. like a lot of stuff comes in. The spiritual is coming into the physical at a later time. Man, you know, like, I was telling somebody about that when it comes to just their destiny with the story of um, Daniel. You know, he he had a message. God was trying to get a message to him. And that angel that was trying to relay the message was like, yo, man, I've been trying to get this message to you, but, like, it took me two weeks. I've been battling demons, you mm-hmm. know, like, to the point where I had to get Michael to help me out, the archangel, to get mm-hmm. this message to you. And I say that to say, like, just like you said, like, if it's out there, it's out there in the spiritual realm. Right. Like, it may take a time to get into the physical, but, yep. Yep. you know, don't lose hope on things that, you know, you've prayed for that, you know, because the tongue is a powerful thing, man. Mm-hmm. And sometimes because of our timing, we'll lose um, patience and mm-hmm. we'll lose faith. Yeah. So, no, know. that's a fact. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. I I, uh, I can attest to that both. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But if it's, like you said, if if it's meant for you to have a um, daughter, you know, I think you'll be a great girl, dad, because you've had sons. And and with that, I feel like with the with the daughter, that'll be like the heart in a sense of like you're, you're at a place where you're so um, level and matured from mm-hmm. the sons because the sons like you being a man, you're raising these men. And mm-hmm. I feel like you have more of a responsibility and instruction because I feel like you being like a black man. This is just me from the outside looking in. I feel like you 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 put that on your shoulders very heavily. Yeah, because you was like, man, I need this. I need my men to be raised up right, right, to where your daughter is gonna be like your heart to the degree, like I mean, to the best of my nurturing. ability. Yeah, but you know what though, I, I when 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 I had my third son because I had both of my Caden and Britton around the same time. They're a couple months apart, like mm, four months apart. Yeah, I can tell. Um, <laughs> right, <laughs> but so when I had Sergeant, I realized I was like, man, I might not have a daughter, mm-hmm. but at the same time. 
I didn't want to wait until I had a, a daughter for my heart to be in that space that they say your heart, you know. And I know maybe only a daughter can bring out certain things, but I've always tried to approach it from a heart-centered space of like, man, I don't want it to be any different. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I want to love them all the same, but, you know, love them as who they are, but the same. Like, have a love for my sons like I have for my daughters. Be soft with my sons like I will with my daughters. Like, I'm so affectionate with my sons. You know what I mean? Mm. I, a lot of men wait until they have a daughter to tap into the affectionate side of who they are. Mm. I didn't want my sons to be deprived of that because young boys need that, too. Mm-hmm. I didn't get any of that for real. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get yeah. much of that from my mom. I didn't have a dad. And and every other male influence in my life was on some, like, trying to make me tough shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't have affectionate men in my world. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it was like I knew how important that was for me when I get hurt or when I'm hurting. I want to be consoled, too. I don't always want to be told, like, nigga, be tough. Yeah. Nigga, nigga, fuck. Tighten up. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't do that shit to my sons, bro. They fall. I'm a, I'm, you okay? You, you yeah. know, they cry. I'm going to hold them. It's okay. We're going to clean you up. Like, all that tough shit. Now, when they whining for no reason, you know, that's a different right, conversation. Nah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's a different conversation. But as mm-hmm. far as on an emotional level, like, man, I, man, no. Mm-hmm. no. Hell no. Yeah, but, you know. and I could I could tell that in the sense of um, going back to the daughter, and that's what I mean in that sense. I feel like it's going to pull something because because I've seen it with men that have daughters, yeah. especially in cases like us in scenarios where we come from a household like how we come from, and then like you know I've seen it with my with my brother to where it's like how he is now with his daughter. Um, you know, when he had his son, like he was like he was young. He was he was young. He was out here, you know, and so it was like with his daughter, it was just like I feel like it's a certain it's a different trigger that clicks in for some whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But just like you, he has that same transparency with his son. Mm-hmm. He has that same communication and love with his son because we didn't have that. Right. And I think like that's what I meant by the chip on your shoulder to a degree, because like when you're raised in households like how me and my brother were like single parent households my mom like she did the best she could she's out again she's four of us right and so it's like when you're in that household where it's like you're really like raising each other and like you know like because i'm the youngest and so by the time i was getting older like they were out here like mm-hmm. they like they weren't around like that so when you're like that in that mind frame you're like man if i ever get children like, I'm going to make sure I'm around. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to make sure that I'm – because I was – we we grew up looking at idolizing drug dealers and mm-hmm. Pac, and yeah, yeah. our uncles weren't around like that. That's why I'm so transparent with my nieces and nephews because, like, we didn't have uncles to be like, yo, man, like, don't do this or don't do that. Like, or, you know, taking us out to eat or taking us to a movie. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, and so it's yeah. like – those simple things like that you look at as you get older be like, man, like, I'm going to be transparent – and and let my son know or let my nephew know, man, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to dag on. Like my nephews, he he's in the rap game now. He's mm-hmm. he just turned eighteen last year. He's in this rap game here in the city, trying to rap like this and rap like that. And you know, I'm like, bro, like you don't have to be like that. Right. You don't have to be in that demographic just because that's hot. Like I seen you grow up. I know how you were ready. <laughs> like like we yeah. like we Stop we it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, be yourself. And he's so t- like, bro, like, you got such a lane in being yourself, bro. You don't even know. Yeah, and I mean, but 18 is still so young and impressionable. You know what I'm saying? It is, man. But- <clears throat> and you still, and you still cultivating your character too at 18. You know, mm-hmm. you it's, you still like trying shit on. You know what I mean? At 18, yeah. like, but certain shit you don't want to try on. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. all, all this gangster shit. Because like you said, the tongue's so powerful, man. They speaking some powerful shit on them. Yeah. Like, real shit. I was in the studio the other day. I was recording when I got here to the city. And uh, we was loading up the beat, just kind of getting ready for the session. So I could hear the cats in the other room, young dudes. And all all these, it's like everybody rapping about up in the skull and they op. And... We killed your partner and you still ain't got no get back. It's like, mm-hmm. it's this taunt murder music. Like, we killed your homie. Do something. Mm-hmm. We waiting on that. 
And it's so crazy because the tongue is so powerful. A lot of these cats ain't killed nobody. And a lot of these cats ain't had none of their homies killed. But it's so trendy mm. to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, because you can verbally speak murder without having to physically do it. It's easy. Oh, yeah. I killed that bitch ass nigga. Mm. Like, I've never done that. But it's easy to say. Like, words are so easy mm. to overlook how powerful they are. You know what I mean? And yeah. so. You know that that's where we at. That's the game. Like the 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 major figures in the rap game. That's what they doing. They glorifying nigga. We dropping ops and we gonna up the score and blah 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 blah. You feel what I'm saying? And I ain't here to really talk down on nobody because I done said my fair share of shit. You know, yeah. fair share of shit. You know, mm -hmm. and still do. You know what I'm saying? Because I had those moments mm -hmm. where I really be feeling some type of way about you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. I'm a Gemini, so <laughs> <laughs> that switch like can that's flip you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like <laughs> yeah. that, you know we can excuse that because I'm mm, a Gemini. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. It's the same with me, bro. And and that's and that's what I'm trying to. And and that's the thing about it that's different. Like how you said, he's trying on those different coats. But the thing about him is that he knows that nigga know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he he's. I see him rapping and he's like, yeah, this is really what I want to rap. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he's getting to that level right now to where like he's finally, even at that age, wanting to weed out the the people that should be in his life to the people that, you know, that's just following trends that he don't want to be a part of no more. Because mm -hmm. I've heard the different songs that he does when he's with friends. And then I've heard the songs where he's by himself mm -hmm. and it's apples to oranges. Yeah. And he's like, this is, and he told me himself, he's like, this is really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we'll do it. Like, right. This is, <laughs> don't don't follow them because like that's that's what's that's what's hot right now. Or like everybody talking about their ops. Like like you said, you put that stuff on you. Like you you wear that coat, you wear that spirit, you wear that curse on you. You know what I'm saying? Like when situations like back in the day, like I told I told him I had to I had to pray the spirit of murder off of me mm. because I got to such a point to where it was like, especially when my homie died, like. I was I had so much hatred in my heart towards that person to where it was just like that's what we were on. Mm -hmm. Like we were really on that to where it was just like even even when when stuff like went to a level where it was when it was cooled down and like it wasn't no more tension, I would still find myself like just a rage. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, why is this why is this rage over me? And, yeah. and I, I ended up talking to a minister and he was like Man, you, you gotta you gotta denounce this stuff, bro. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta pray you gotta pray that murder off of you. Mm -hmm. You gotta pray that anger off. Of you. you gotta pray that death off of you. And it's like I thought about when I was doing. It, I just thought about all the times like you say, like even if it's just lyrics. Like for me, it wasn't lyrics. It was literally like I'm gonna kill this Living. nigga. Like yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's just yeah, on some like. Yeah, yeah. But you speak that stuff and it it weighs on you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I can only imagine when you're putting on wax mm -hmm. and you're hearing it constantly. Right. Like shh, that has I to mean, flood the brain. Yeah. It's like. But some of the biggest artists in the game wanted to do something different, but they chose to go the route. The money. Like Jay-Z said, truth be told, I wanted to rhyme like common sense. <laughs> yeah. I, something, something, something. I ain't been rhyming like common sense. Yeah. Like Basically, like I, this is how I wanted to rap, but that shit wasn't where the money was at. Mm -hmm. So I said, fuck that. Stop rapping like that. Now I'm rapping like this because this is where the money at. Yeah. Because truth be told, a lot of people didn't get in this shit with like, from the bottom of my heart, I got a message. I got a mission statement. I'm trying to impact the culture, the people. Yeah. Trying to change somebody's trajectory. Niggas jumped in this shit like, I ain't trying to work, but I don't want to hustle. I don't want to be in the street no more. I can rhyme. Fuck it, I'm a rap. This is mm -hmm. where I'm going to get my money from. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Yeah. Or I can't work. You know, I've, yeah. I've, 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 I've seen scenarios where like, like I've, I've talked to cats that genuinely want to work, but mm -hmm. because of like their lifestyle that they did at a younger age, they're still marked with felonies mm -hmm. to where it's like, bro, like I'm one foot in, one foot out. And this, there isn't no plan B for me, nigga. Mm -hmm. Like all I know is the streets and rapping. Like right. this is yeah. my, this is my way out of this. And so it's like when you're in that mind frame, like you said, like you you may have be like the Jay Z line where it's like, yo, like if it's it's for that. Cardi B just said that last year, like she was in tears on on the on live. Where she was like, man, I, she's like I don't want to rap like this no more, man. 
Like I don't. Mm. She was like, I don't. I don't want to rap like this. Like they they're sending me this stuff to rap. She was like, it's just it's just it brings a certain demonic demon out of me. Mm. And she was like, that that was just a perfect example. Like at that time when when she was doing what she was like trying to get on, like she looking at it like any means necessary, man. Mm. But then you make that bread and you get to that certain level, you don't you don't want to be in that lifestyle anymore. You don't want to be in that mind frame. People evolve, man. Right, yeah. Won't smoke cause I hit your whole nigga Like on no nigga, but I know nigga Wanna woe nigga, let's go nigga I'm the motherfucker spook by the dope nigga Only rap nigga ballin' with no ice on yeah. If it's good, we can do it with the lights on yeah. Nigga handcuff holes out of python sure. If it ain't six feet, then the price wrong I don't trust these niggas, they python No, that's a fact, man and, and a lot of people think they want something until they get it You know what I'm saying? Or they don't really know what comes with the things that they think they want Mm-hmm. A lot of guys jump in the street, man. Shit, we trying to get this bread. They start making money, but now they got to watch out because people trying to kill them. People trying to rob them. Police trying to arrest them. Man. And it's like, yeah, they like, damn, this shit ain't even worth it. Mm-hmm. But they already done, you know, accumulated certain living expenses and quality of life and taking care of this person and that person. So it's almost like they can't stop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, make no mistake, as big as Cardi B is, she's still a part of the machine. And they can still yeah. turn her off, just like anybody else. You know what I'm saying? They can do, you know, but when you that big, they don't silence you with with the music because they know your impact too big. They can't do that, really. Mm-hmm. Like, Jay-Z can still be silenced. But see, they kill the big ones because you're so big, man. They can't, you know, it's it's, I think it's a little bit more difficult to... Once they create you to be such a machine and a monster, like nobody could stop Drake musically as impact. Nobody could unimpact. You know, you can't undo the impact of Drake or Jay Z or Cardi B or Beyonce. But they can still be silenced. They can still be turned off. They water can still be shut the fuck off. And usually, when they that big, you just got to kill those people. Mm. Michael Jackson, Prince. You can't undo the impact of a Michael Jackson or a Prince. They didn't let them too big. They don't let them get too big. It's too out of their control. Yeah. They're like, damn, people love these motherfuckers. We that made this nigga this big though. Mm-hmm. You gotta kill him. It's yeah. the only way. And we still gonna get paid from him. So we ain't losing. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. I have my own conspiracy with that, man. I think that's why, honestly, I was talking to um, my boy Rod last week and we were talking about, because he was like, man, he was like, would you, he was like, would you even re-sign the contract um, that Drake signed at the level that he is right now? What do you mean? Because he, he just did another, he just did another negotiation with Universal, with Universal Murder. Universal <laughs> Murder. Universal. <laughs> too much murder. It's murder. But uh, Universal Music Group um, for OVO. Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, like, why don't, why wouldn't he just, like, do it all solo? Mm-hmm. Like why? Why being such the machine that he is? Why would he do that? And I was like, it may be different. You know, those conversations have definitely probably been had at the point that Drake is at, and he could do that. But it's only I look at it at two different ways why he didn't do that. Either a when you start getting into these meetings and they start showing you, like yeah, you can go solo, but this is gonna affect you. This is gonna affect you. We're going to blackball you from Apple. We're going to blackball you from this. We're going to try to do everything because now you're trying to take money out of the out, out of our pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we can't allow that. Mm-hmm. And so in situations like that, I think Drake seemed like, in his eyes, it's better to just resign it and stay in the machine mm. because then I'll be fighting against the machine, and I'm so mm. big that they, they may either ridicule me um, – Throw some kind of weird jail stuff at me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, niggas get that big, and then they don't need a machine, and then he start talking trash. Like you said, they they either try to, like, blacklist you, they try to daggone execute you, or if they if they can't execute you, then they'll just uh, make you look like a fool mm-hmm. or something, make you look crazy or something like that. Yeah, so, for sure. he may have did that to avoid all of that, or B, he may enjoy the machine. Mm-hmm. He may, like, at that point, he, he may not want to do the... You know, because being an independent, even being Drake, is still a lot of work. 
Mm. And so when you have that marketing of Universal and all that, you mm. may enjoy being in the machine at the rate that he's making money. And so yeah. it's like, I mean, he is a machine at this point. But then you got to understand, you know, you sign a contract and they give you another hundred million dollars for your label. Now you got a label deal. Your label is signed to that. Mm. Drake is still considered an artist. But when you run a record label, you could do business on behalf of yourself as the artist. That's why Nipsey say Nipsey is the uh, 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 um, the brand. Nipsey the artist and hustle. I'm the executive, you know, of this, right? So imagine going and getting a deal on behalf of Drake, and they give you a hundred million dollars, but you already got a hundred in the bank. Well, they done already upfronted me money. This is future earnings because they already know what I'm projected to do. I ain't even got to touch my hundred I got in the bank. I'm spending somebody else's money. It's like going to the bank. Your business is already a lucrative business. And you say, hey, man, we want some more money because we don't want to spend our own shit. Mm. And they're like, all right, we'll give it to you because they're already looking at the projected earnings. They already know what you're making. So now everything you make is essentially going back to pay off the $100 million, but you got the $100 million up front, so it don't matter. Because mm -hmm. everything you spend the $100 million on is to make the $100 million back tenfold. So it don't even matter. Yeah. Like, these boys ain't tripping on no money. It ain't even about the money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, a, I, I feel like you when they make those business deals, it's just to say that, man, you're still in the business. That's it. <laughs> we giving you more money. You still, man. You you you're willing to do business still. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You ain't leaving the league. You're yeah. still here. Yeah. You know. Um, but I think when when artists get artists that big, no longer want to be a part of it because it's an organization. When artists no longer want to be a part of the organization, then I feel like, okay, they're like, well, what you going to do? They're like, well, we're going to speak out against the organization. They're like, well, nigga, now nah, that's what you're not going to do. <laughs> now, Hold up, now, you, you, you can leave, but you better leave and shut the fuck up while you do it because then you're going to wind up dead. Mm -hmm. You're going to wake up dead. Call Cindy to go to his house real quick. Who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so they, they you know, they, 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 Who this they, random double D woman that just came to my <laughs> They, 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 uh, they, man, having that much money and influence and power, they scared of that shit. Like Kanye is, you know, a person that, you know, uh, my, my man was, uh, we was talking about Kyrie. We was watching some highlight clips. I was like, man, Kyrie, a dog. On the court, like a, a literal dog, bro, like crazy. And he was like, "Yeah, man," because he, you know, Kyrie stand on business. I said, "Kyrie do stand for something," but anytime you retract the statement, my nigga, you ain't what you thought you was. Mm. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, even with Ye, he speak a lot of his mind, but it's like you gotta look at it like. How powerful are these fucking people? They going up against to make a person apologize for speaking their truth. Mm. And you rich as fuck, you powerful as fuck, but it show you powerless. If I come in this motherfucker right now and you like, you like my clothes, I'm like, not really, bro. I don't really, you know, I don't really like that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm a man, you a man. And you're like, all right, well, shit, you know, apologize about that. I'm like, apologize about what? <laughs> you like, the I don't fact like that it, you man. don't like my shit. Mm -hmm. Nigga, that's my truth. I don't give a fuck. You asked me, I told you, I don't like your shit. And you like, apologize. And whatever it is you got over me, I issue an apology, man. You know, on behalf of, um, you know, Janelle Farrar, I really want to apologize for what I said about your shirt. Mm -hmm. When truth be told in my heart of hearts, I still feel I hate your fucking shirt. Yeah, shirt trash. <laughs> yeah. Sorry that I use your shirt as an example because you got a deer on your shirt. That's I'm funny. not a huge fan of it. But Canadian I, mouse. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would have never said that. Yeah. I just do it as an example. So yeah. don't know. Farrar doesn't like my shirt, y'all. On the side. I, mean, I, I, I would wear it, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you also had on some fucking police glasses when you came. <laughs> Let me put the glasses back on. Put, put the glasses back on. I was like, man, talking you look about like the my, police. My NASCAR glasses. You look like a cop. Niggas is done brought them NASCAR glasses back in glasses. style. Y'all look like the police. This is what people wear, ladies and gentlemen, when you when the you're police. Out here fishing. No, that's the damn police living, and white people. Living, living life, baby. Living life. No, you those know what? Those those glasses that come with They'll the band. Be, I can't find them right they, now. Those are glasses that come with the band on the back. They hang on the back, and then you can let them hang around your neck when you don't feel like wearing them on your face. I can't find them now. I'll wear them the rest of this interview. Then. Please so, do to get the <laughs> tape off of them. Yeah. Yeah. Picking on my glasses. Oh my God! Go ahead, put him on. He's like a volleyball player. 
picking on my glasses. We are here now, baby. What's we good? are here yeah. now. Well, you know what? You like it. I love it. <laughs> yes, sir. But yeah, for sure. I feel you on that. Um, with that, is that like, because when, when I look at the stuff that we're talking about and then I think about an artist like yourself mm-hmm. who is transitioned out of, out of like being a artist under a label mm-hmm. to where you're, you're pretty much with psych tune, which I want to say, is this your explain psych tune? Because I have my own theory. I don't with fucking, I can't explain psych tune. I'm not even with psych tune. Let, okay. Let's, let's, yeah. I, so I dropped a project. I did a single deal with Psych Tune. I'm not with Psych Tune. You only had a couple projects with Psych Tune, bro. Well, so look, I did a sing. I, I did a deal where I had 12 singles with Psych Tune. You know what I thought Psych Tune was? What? I thought it was yours. The label. Mm-hmm. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you named it after Tune. <laughs> oh God! Hell no. Um, <laughs> Get it? Psych nah, time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, it was a real label. Um, at, based out of Nashville, and when they came to me, of course they do all the romancing that labels do, and mm-hmm. you know, like I told them, I done been in bed with y'all before. I know how this fucking song and dance go, mm-hmm. and they was like, I swear it ain't that, and I'm like, okay, yeah. why you take your glasses off? I just wanted to see you real quick. I couldn't really see <laughs> oh, like I wanted to. Right, I'll put them back on. Yeah, we right. gonna be here for a minute. You get comfortable. Uh, so. I'm talking about KB, he got his glasses on. Uh, man, no, his not shaped like yours. Them Ray Bans <laughs> with with the with the police lenses in them. But, <laughs> but your shit is full out police. Shape. The police lenses are aviators, dog. They, no, them man, niggas wear that's aviators. No nine one one shit. On. Police don't wear that shit. That's that Mayberry. Wear aviators, no, man. no, no. Police wear those. Pull up police. Them, them, that's, the, that's in the damn sixties. <laughs> they was wearing aviators, bro. That's what they, they wear. Still wear All right. So, but uh, anyway, th- with Psych Tune, I I signed a single deal with Psych Tune, mm-hmm. and I and I was supposed to do twelve oh singles. Um, so over the course of a year, I was gonna drop a song every month, and being on the label, man. I know how to get up off the label. I was like, man, y'all some BS. You know oh, what I mean? Wow. I'm trying to get up off this label. So I started dropping the songs in in threes. Mm-hmm. And so it looked like little small projects, but really they were all singles, but I was just releasing them three at a time on the same day. But it was three different songs. Yeah. But the way that Apple and Spotify was packaging the music, it looked like small, short EPs. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. It was three different songs. It was just three singles dropping on the same day. And I was trying to get the hell up out of there. So instead of a year, <laughs> I did like six months on Psych Tune. I just sped up the process. Uh. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, man. I Like these labels, man, this shit, it's not for everybody. You know, but everybody ain't meant to be independent either because a certain amount of work, there's a certain amount of work that go into it. And you still have to have a team of people. Mm-hmm. That's what people don't understand. Independent. There's no fucking artist. Niggas be doing all this arrogant shit, rapping, talking about they did it on their own. That just sound good. But if I was on a team, I'd be offended. I'm like, nigga, you need to go back and revise that lyric. <laughs> you did not do it on your own. Mm-hmm. We back here pressing buttons as well. But I understand what they're saying. Yeah, they yeah. did it without the machine. Yeah. But they they still did it with a small, intimate group of people, which is a small little machine. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Still so, a team. Exactly, bro. Like, all, ain't nobody independent. The world is an interdependent world. Mm. We can't live without trees, sunlight, water. Yeah. Like, bro, everything is interdependent. Like, mm-hmm. everything. You don't got a podcast without guests. Mm-hmm. Unless you're gonna be on here by yourself, and if you're on here by yourself, you ain't got a podcast without a mic. Yeah, right. everything is. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nobody doing this shit off individual merit. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like that's how God intended it to be for sure. For that, you know, yeah. what's us being in human nature and mm-hmm. and being one with each other, and that and and the main root of that connection being love. Mm-hmm. He intended it to be like that. That's why everything came in twos. All the animals came in twos. They could have came individuals, mm-hmm. one one of everything. He was like, nah, nigga, you need a companion. Yeah. And even if it, the deepness of that, even if you get, like, look at certain, like, asexual things, like like plants, like, it's still in a teamwork effort mm-hmm. where it's like I still need <laughs> the help of something to produce and get to the fullness of my ability. Bruh. I mean, even if I don't have that, I still need the sun. 
You know what I'm saying? I was watching a documentary on trees and the the network that they have within the ground and how they speak to each other through roots, through mm. I mean, bro, this shit was so fascinating. It's crazy. Bro, mm-hmm. and and how shit grows and how mushrooms are like it was mind blowing, man. Mm. The way that Mother Nature corresponds with each other. All trees are sending signals to each other. Trees are need water. A tree can send another tree water through the root. I mean, it's crazy. They got a whole fucking telecommunication system underground mm-hmm. with trees alone, and it's 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 so fascinating, though, bro. Straight yeah. up, yeah, yeah. That's deep. That's yeah, deep as hell. That shit real. I didn't know about that the whole. I'm gonna like, send you. The, I'm gonna send you. The, I'm gonna send you the documentary. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna send that shit to you, bro. It's mind blowing when you start discovering how trees communicate. This whole neighborhood that we in right now, all of these trees know each other. They talk. They got a whole network underground how they communicate, bro. Mm. Yeah, shit's crazy. Yeah, I believe it. I, yeah. I believe that um, that's how the world was built off of that, off of that mm-hmm. communication, off of frequency, off of. Um, Stuff like the trees, like dolphins, like wolves. You bro, know? we could talk to everything. We're mm-hmm. connected to everything. We're so disconnected, but we are the most connected thing. They just, you know, that's the information they removed. And then they want to make us feel like it's about our lineage. Man, they, you don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. They've removed you niggas from Africa. It's like, <laughs> nigga, we was magic. We are magic. We could do and We can teleport. Like, bro, it's really real. Like, mm-hmm. you telekinesis. Like, all of that shit is real. Movies like Matilda, they don't just, art imitates reality in the realest Mm -hmm. way. They ain't putting that shit out because it's cool. Conceptually, how do they even think of these things if it's not something that's, if anything you can imagine as a human can be done in a real way. But they want to make you feel like this shit is, imagine, you know, like this shit is make-believe that you could think that oh shit i need to get one of those clorox wipes i need to walk and get it no you can make that shit come to you and you can make it open and you can make it come out and wipe this fucking table Mm. i really believe that's the knowledge everybody think it's about this race shit it ain't race you got motherfuckers who i truly believe in my heart of hearts they have that information they have that knowledge and they're using it yeah they're using it in our faces we don't know like they're really using this shit. That's the information, bro. We can fly. We can do everything. Mm. We, you know, our minds are like the limitless pill. When he was like, he heard a language. All he had to do is hear it in the movie Limitless, Bradley Cooper, and he could speak it. He just heard it. it was like, oh, and then he's fluent in it. Like we, we are all knowing. I truly believe that. Yeah. But I, I just feel like. Over time, man, they've they've def- definitely like they've dumbed it down. Bro, they've dumbed our frequency God. down <laughs> to the point where we yeah. humans and we just take we walk up right. That's it, and yeah. we can talk. Another reason why Christ came is is not just the salvation, um, but the aspect of you know look at the example of what he had with Peter. You know where Peter he had Peter walking on the water with him, and and Peter started to drown because he seen himself walking on water. Mm-hmm. He said, "Oh, he, oh, of little faith." Mm. When he left, when he ascended, even with all the stuff that Christ did in a three year span, um, when he bounced, he said, in my name, you're going to do even more than I did. Mm. And then bounce. This is mm. Christ telling people that. Mm. So it's certain. So surely he left that spirit, mm-hmm. that ability to do these things mm. here, here on this earth. Yeah. Come we on. just don't tap into it. Facts. You know, all this stuff that he was doing, all the stuff that you're talking about is built off of the natural God-given ability that he's given human nature, which is us as well. Mm -hmm. People just get dumbed down with society. They feed you this stuff, but it's universal law. That's why you said you see it on movies and people are downgraded or or belittled. Oh, Matilda or all like, you know, vampires and all that mess. People shape shifting. They got to put it in your face because it's universal law. It's (laughs) universal law. We have to show them that this stuff is here. Yes. Now we're going to shit on it. Yes. And make it seem like it's irrelevant. But yes. it's universal law for us to show you this. And they have to be in agreement. But they don't have to head nod in agreement. They just have to watch it, listen, consume it. Mm-hmm. That's the agreement. Yep. That's them agreeing to it when they watch it, when they hear it, when they consume it. That's 
that's the universal law. A lot yeah. of people don't know that. They have to. It's almost like in the court of law, you have the right to face your accuser. If a motherfucker write a statement on you, it has to be in the motion. There's no such thing as a nigga, you know, giving out information or, or, or snitching on you. And that's why they always say, nigga, show me the paperwork. You mm -hmm. got cause you have the right. Same with universal law, bro. It's it's just universal law, dog. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I I, man, you know, I'm so fascinated with your relationship, not just with God, but with the word of God. Right. Because mm. uh, I just recently bought my first Bible mm. and That's uh, what's up. right. This turning into my podcast. <laughs> 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 this is what I want to talk about because I, I love how you can then pull from books of the Bible to make it relevant for what we're talking about. Like I'm always yeah. fascinated with that. Right. Cause that's such a, that book is so powerful to the point where you have people who have churches for 60, 70 years preaching from one book, mm. one, one book. Yeah. Nigga, I couldn't talk about one book for fucking 70 years. We didn't talked about it enough. Like there's nothing for me to pull, but the book is so rich mm. in experience and, and how it ties into life mm. that you could. So, um, like I said, I, I just recently bought my first Bible and um, I didn't really go to church like that once I was old enough to not be forced to go to church. Mm. My mom used to make me go. And when I got old enough, I was like, I ain't going to go to church because I don't like being forced to do things. And I didn't. Yeah. So being in Portland, I started going back to church mm. and I bought my first Bible. And so, uh, well, I got saved two Sundays ago or, um, and but I told him my walk started my walk with God I've never not walked with God even if I didn't feel connected to the walk I've always walked with him right that but, seed's always been there for sure mm -hmm. and but I, so I called one of the one of the deacons um that kind of got me into the church mm -hmm. and I told him I said man at that Monday so Sunday I went to church Monday I called him and I woke up, I said, I don't really know what to do. Like, I have, my relationship is so estranged with God, I don't really know how to incorporate him into my day. Like, so now when I go to the men's Bible study, I ask questions like, how do y'all, like, what is your regiment on a daily with your relationship with God? Like, how do you incorporate that with your day-to-day -day living? You know, and a lot of people told me, you know, prayer is the first thing I do. I don't grab my phone when I wake up, I pray. I read the scriptures, you know, I go for walks, you know, all of those things. So I brought my Bible with me here, not to the podcast, but to Charlotte. I haven't even read that bitch because mm. it's like the world be whirling as soon as you wake up and that shit just mm. take me. Yeah. You feel me? And and mm. it's crazy because I looked at the Bible this morning like, damn, I ain't even opened you, but I brought you to open you. But yeah. it's like I ain't gave you the time. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, that's what the Holy Spirit is for as well. Yeah. You know, in, in those situations, because, you know, the Holy Spirit will minister to you. Um, that is the written word with the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then you have the living word, mm -hmm. which is God itself. Mm -hmm. And so those moments where it's like, you know, when you when you ask like the cats at the church, like, what is the rhythm? What is their uh, regiment regiment of how you guys do things? Because everybody's doing their different things. Because everybody's relationship is different, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, like I would, I would ask, like, how is your communication with your partner, you know, with your spouse? Because it'll get to a certain level. Like it's, it's, you, you don't want to keep it in a, not to say you're keeping it. You don't want to have it in a mind frame where it's, um, ritualistic or mm -hmm. regimented. Because then you'll have those five a.m. morning sessions where you may just. You know, it's it's all based off the spirit and instinct. You know, if I'm up for whatever reason and I know I go to sleep at 10 and I'm up at four in the morning, you must be needing to talk to me about something. So I need I need to pray this out, like reveal these things, reveal people that I may need to pray for. He may he, he that may be why I'm up this early. Mm -hmm. I may not do 5 a.m. every morning. You know, I may get into a prayer session at noon, you know, but, you know, I, I talk to God like how I talk to like my father, you know, because that's what I look at him as. It's just like my, my spiritual father. And in those situations, you, you build that relationship, you build that intimacy, you build that communication to where he'll lead you to the right times. You know, mm -hmm. you'll feel it. Like you, you feel the tugging in your spirit. Like, yeah, I need to read, 
But God sees that. God sees the heart. And he'll, he'll even not even reading, he'll still bless you with a word out of nowhere, something throughout the day. Exactly. And so, like, that's that's pretty much what I tell people. Just, like, stay in tune with the spirit of God, and then everything else will flow. Mm. You know, seek ye first the kingdom. Mm. And those things will come. And so, like, that's where it starts. You're in the right track, like the mind frame. Mm -hmm. Like, the word, like, I don't know the word. I tell people all the time, I don't know it front to back. You know, like, God will let me reveal certain things and certain, you know, I might go through seasons where I'm reading the word hard. Um, but my spirit is always connected. My mm. spirit is always in tune. And so as long as that's the main thing, like, you're fine, bro. Nah, that's a fact. I, I like it. That, that was well put, well said. You know what I mean? Um, nah, I appreciate that. Creek full of soldiers dressed in all black. Took it all from us, we taking it all back. Spending reparations on guns and Molex. Liberated killer, I can wear both hats. Steal with them niggas that rose and smoke flash. Drunk as hell in the club, hollering where the hoes at. While I'm on your chest, better not hold back. When I let my killers go, they ain't gonna hold back. I may go through seasons where I went through a season before the new year. I went on a fast. It was just like I closed out the new year on a fast. Very next week. Thugging again. It was, yeah. like, it was just like, I was like, man, I should have stayed on the fast. Yeah. It's just like, but that's, that's, he's married to the backslider. Mm. You know, it's just like, in that situation, you got to acknowledge yourself. He's married to the backslider. That's what he is. Come how, on. How many times did he say you forgive a man? 70 times seven. Mm. You know, that's, that's Christ. 70 that. times seven. What's mm. 70 times seven? Exactly. 70 times 70 or 70 times seven? 70 times 7. Oh. And, and that time, that was an exaggeration that Christ was paraphrasing in. That was like a lot back a then. A lot. Yeah. It's, it's, like it's, it's infinite to how many times. <laughs> Being in this flesh, mm -hmm. you got you to gotta beat this. It's like working out. You got you going to mm. beat this flesh daily. You going to mm. battle this flesh daily. Yeah. Because the flesh going to want when it's won. Man, you know? the flesh is like a spoiled child. Mm -hmm. And you got to keep telling and I've it. been feeding it Man, <laughs> man, man. <laughs> I've been feeding the gummies for man. 20 years My damn <laughs> My damn flesh so spoiled So damn This motherfucker rot get, get, Got everything it wanted Yeah My flesh don't want to do nothing It meant <laughs> It's up to my flesh, boy. I'll be in Chattanooga somewhere. Nigga, my yeah. flesh fucking pressed snooze on my alarm three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also flesh that had me go to the gym at like 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. and get it in. Uh, well, you know what? I take that back. I was at the gym at like 11 something. I had went and did some content yesterday. And I'm doing 365 days of stretching my body. Mm. Not even working out, but stretching. Because I'm too damn young to not be so limber. You yeah. know what I mean? But I also understand that flexible is the body, is the mind, too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So Facts. That's I'm, a fact. I'm definitely working on the flexibility in my mind as well as my body. But I got in the gym last night, and I was proud of myself. I'm like, damn, I was in there before midnight. And I so that means I still did my stretch, meaning I haven't missed a stretch since the new year started. Mm. And I told myself, I said, I don't care if it's two minutes, a minute. Like I was so tired the day before yesterday. I was in the bed. I looked up a YouTube video on how to stretch in the bed, and I stretched in the bed for six minutes. I, I'm just like, I just want to be able to be consistent. That's what the 365 showed me. I could do anything. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. So that prayer. You know, uh, warring with my flesh on a daily, not even warring, but building a better relationship with it so I can understand why it needs what it needs mm. and, and why it's asking. Like, I know why you want that, but you mm. can't get it. But I know why you want it. I understand. Yeah. And explain it to it. Like my son. My son was like, yeah, dad, I want a PC. I was like, okay, what's a PC, Caden? He was like, you know, it's a thing where you can, it's like a monitor for you to play the game. I said, well, you got a TV. You don't need a PC, a, a mm -hmm. monitor, Caden. But I knew what he was talking about. He want the PC, which f allows you to fully access the game mm -hmm. in a way that you can't do on the video game. It, it's like jailbreaking every video game. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, no. Mm -hmm. You can, and I and I talked to his mom about it. I sent her the link, and it had the information on it. And I said, I want you to be looking at what I'm looking at while I'm explaining to you why I feel he shouldn't have this. Mm. So we both reading it off. And I'm like, he's too young for that. Because the games that he have, I already don't agree with it. But imagine if he could fully access Fortnite. Like GTA. The shit that GTA on PC is T a whole Grizzly. other game. Oh, my bro. God, man. Them niggas is – I be watching T Grizzly. T Grizzly got a Twitch that mm. he – he got a whole world. He ain't even rapping no more. He making so much money off that joint. He got a whole world 
mm. that he's built and cultivated. And people have to pay to enter it. You know mm. what I mean? People, you know, meeting grown ass people in these little chats. And I, bro, I, but, but like I say, I told him no. I explained to him why. And it's just like my flesh. My flesh desires things. And I have to then rationalize with it. Like, you can't get it, but this is why. Mm. Sometimes I give in. A yeah. lot of times I give in, actually. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the story of the flesh, man. Mm. It's, it's 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 a never ending journey. You know, mm. is this flesh is is something that you? It's almost like the red light, you know, like and and how you approach the red light is how you approach the flesh as you get older. The red light, yeah, the what red meaning like the red light of traffic. You know, some people, some people will speed to a red light. Yeah, in a in a rush, thinking that. Their speed is going to change the red light, you know, or or some people will ease into the red light thinking if I ease into it, by the time I ease into it, it'll turn green and then I can go. But it's still a red light. Mm -hmm. You're you're taking a gamble with it regardless. And with that, that's that's how the flesh is. Like some people feel like um, if I do it this way, it it may make me more disciplined um, in this avenue. But you'll, it's it's a full body thing, like mm-hmm. you said. It's it's starts here, mind, body, and spirit. Even with the the connection that you're having, what you're stretching, like it's it's a certain level of discipline and holiness to that. You know, as as I was telling my sister with like the monks, like it's it's a level of holiness with the monks what they do. Now they may not be filled with the spirit of Christ, but you can have holiness and not have the spirit of Christ. Yeah. You? That's a discipline. Mm. But if you can, if you combine the spirit with the mind of discipline that you already got with mm. your physical, psh, bro, you on a war path. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm at, man. I'm 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 physically disciplined for the most part. Mm. But I I I am, but I ain't. You know what I mean? Like mm. I I. Nobody has to make me get in the gym. Nobody has to make me do music. Like, I'm disciplined in certain aspects, uh, but I'm looking to definitely, that, that's a big word for me, you know, like rest this year, restoration, rebuilding uh, of just like, you know what I mean, of, of all of my shit, bro, my disciplines, man, my spiritual discipline. That's mainly. crazy you said that because that's what God told me the word for this year was. What? It was restoration. Mm, come on, man. He, said, he yeah. said the word for this year, I was talking to my sister, and I applied it to a couple friends because it's, it's some of, if they're in unison in the spirit, a lot of us are dealing with the same things mm-hmm. in different kind of ways. And I was like, you know what? This is this is the year of restoration because, you know, like my sister went through a lot at a young age, and I was like, everything that you think that God forgot about, he's going to restore you. Yeah. With that. Yeah. Everything that you think you lost, everything you thought you lost opportunity on. Mm. <laughs> this is the season of restoration. There we go. You just gotta lean into them. Yeah. You know, press in on them. You know, even with the flesh, like the flesh, you're gonna battle that. I call it the onion peeling effect. Mm-hmm. You know, like as you continue to build yourself, it's it's like peeling the onion back. You know, you'll going back to the red light, you won't rush to the red light. You'll you'll just stop and just be like the red light mm-hmm. I, I expect this yeah you're in the battles of the flesh is the red light like okay i expect this red light is gonna come sooner or later but i'll be prepared for it. i got my seatbelt on mm-hmm. i'm not gonna rush it i'm gonna embrace it fully be like you know what yeah i am battling with my flesh she does got a fat booty but i'm not gonna submit to the flesh in this in this avenue of just talking to this woman and having wasted semen you know what i'm saying because that's that's all i'm doing like yeah. there's, there's no connection i'm just really off of this flesh right you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna let this person get me angry like how I usually would let them mm, get me angry. Yeah, yeah. Because I know how the enemy wants to feed into that. Mm-hmm. That's all he needs is a crack. Mm. All he needs is a crack, and then my anger will go to. Christ said the thoughts. If you even look at somebody like that, that's lust. If you even think those things, he told me this last year. He said that 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 saying that I said about lust that applies for your mind frame as well. Like if you even think about killing a nigga, hey, you kill that nigga. And so it was just like, dang, like, I got an onion peeling. I was just like, boy, I got a. <laughs> you got, it's a, I say that, say it's an everyday thing, bro. You're mm-hmm. just breaking this flesh down and getting more in tune with, with what God has for you. And it all starts with just 
having his will over your will. Yeah, that's a fact. Like I, I had to learn to put my pride to the side and, and really start asking him. And I wasn't asking him in the morning, like, you know, what do you what do you want? Mm. Like, what do you want for my life? Right. Like, what is the purpose of me being here? Versus Truly. what we yeah. want to do. Yeah, because I, I know what I want it, in yeah, certain exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. But and as you get closer, it's like, man, I don't I don't care about none of this. Right. Like, like what? I, I care about my family. You know, you want to be comfortable and make sure that everybody's financially stable. But, like, what what is my imprint here? Because mm-hmm. you see people die at 2. You see people die at 35. Right. You see people live to 105. I met I was I was talking to a lady yesterday at my grandma center that she go to like a retirement center where they go and spend a couple hours. She was ninety seven, but she was so sharp though. Mm-hmm. Like sharp. Like sharp, bro. Mm-hmm. Like shit crazy how sharp this woman was. She got a cell phone, she answered the phone, hey, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> like, bruh, sharp as fuck. And I was like, man, you've watched so much of the world change and evolve. But like you say, some people die in the womb. Some people come out the womb living and then don't make it. They die, you know, and some people die early. Some people, you know, so being I I tweeted the other day, I don't have any resolutions. I just want to stay in alignment with my purpose. That's Mm -hmm. it. You feel me? I ain't got no resolutions, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't have any. I wanted to be so much so in tune with my relationship with God that. He empties me out and fill me up with the shit he got me to do. Because like you say, I know what the fuck I want to do. If he tell me, I want to be so obedient that if he tell me, rap isn't what I have for you to do anymore. It is what it is. You need to move on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. But at the end of the day, I have to rebuild that connection because I don't even think that it's strong enough at this point for me to hear when he's speaking to me to tell me what to do. To be like, hey, your time up here. Let's go. This is what I need you to do. You know what I mean? And and it's lead that's why it's led me back to him in such a natural way. I my circumstance didn't lead me there. I ain't go to prison and find religion. My partner ain't religious and made me go to church. Like none of that shit. It was just I fine. found it on it, Brad, it, it was, was a yearning. It just what it was. It was like cutting my hair. Like mm. it just so many years I needed to do it. I wanted to do it. I was afraid to do it. And I just did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like nobody made me, but the it, I mean it just felt right, you know what I'm saying? Like and it still feels right. Yeah. But yeah, it's it, it this is starting this journey was probably the best thing for me. And I and I don't want to get deep into the religion, mm-hmm. you know, more so the practice, the faith, but not the religious part. Like I don't I don't feel I'm gonna walk around saying I'm some devout Christian, you know what I mean? Like, but a believer in God and Christ and and you know, rooted in the spirit and understanding and having a relationship is where I am. But I don't I don't feel called to being like I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um yeah. 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 Cause sometimes when you do that and um I get what you're saying. And a lot of the time for, for years, I still identify as a Christian um to people, but a lot of the time now, uh, I tell people that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Because I've been in that avenue where like like you, I was forced to go at an early age and I left the church. I left the church as soon as I could get it. Like sixteen when I was driving. Yeah. Like when when like high school when I didn't have to go no more because I could drive, I wasn't going to church no more. Mm-hmm. And so like from there to like my twenties, I was in the world. Like right. I was in the world and even that seed was still there, but I was really in the world. Like I went dark like a cult, like mm-hmm. on some King Solomon type stuff. And was like it for me, it 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 showed me going one on one with the enemy, with the devil himself. Like, all that stuff from my childhood came back into realization Mm -hmm. where it was just like, well, if this nigga is real and we got and I'm and I'm I'm dating a a witch that is that is literally like talking about Satan and they're only Achilles. They're they're like because at that time I studied Buddhism. I studied Hinduism. I had Islamic friends. I studied Islam. The only religion that these cats were enemies of or setting plans for was the Christians. Mm. The only enemies that the the Satanists were plotting on was Christians. 
Like you talk about the stuff that like we lost. Like it's some like you said, it's some evil people that know certain these things that 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 they know the world has lost because of the downgrade that they're dumbing down. They get that energy from Satan. Mm-hmm. Like we're supposed to get that from the faith of of Christ and and of God. But they they've used Satan to unlock these things to get these revelations. That's how you got fortune tellers. That's how you got sorcerers. That's how you got people that dag on like um, set dag on curses on people like generational curses. Some people mm-hmm. are living in curses because of like witchcraft. Right, like people yeah. like putting that, and they would like say the only person that they couldn't control was a Christian. Mm. Like we can't cast a spell on a Christian. A Christian can only cast a spell on itself because mm. it opens itself to the world. Mm. Like I've seen, I've seen the interviews with with Satanists where he's like, I would offer a Christian like a beer, and as soon as he offers, it's like as soon as he accepts that it's on, it's on the pop because he's opened himself to it. Mm-hmm. Like like an uh, enemy, the the demonic realm has no authority over a human technically right. any human, but we allow them to. Mm. And then once it nests in there, it has authority over your temple, universal over your, over your law, mind. universal law. You've yeah. given me authority over your mm-hmm. house. So now this is my house, nigga. It's like, <laughs> but then like with a Christian, because it's covered in the blood, it's like, we can't even mess with this. Nigga. But either, we, we so got to, we got to get him to open the door first. So that would be the same as a woman offering her body. That would be essentially her door. Once you enter it. Like a beautiful woman, right? Mm-hmm. Lure, luring a guy in, 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 like, oh yeah, boy, you know, I want to, you know, she could be a Satanist, for instance, and and want to give a man her body as the way to open that portal, that door. And once he enters it, it's no different from taking that beer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's many different avenues. It's, it's many. Di- all he needs is a crack. Well, that's what and everybody's that's what the record industry different. is, right? Like I offer you this contract, you can't say no to that. That's money. I'm offering you this contract. I'm gonna take you to this party. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do some drugs. We're gonna be some hot women here. Like, don't worry. Like, don't worry about the contract. We sign it later. Sign it. Sign it later. Have fun. Do this. Like they they set you with different vices because everybody's different. Mm-hmm. My vice may be women. Your vice may be money. His vice may be drugs. You know. His vice may be men. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just you never know. But they'll they'll have every flavor for any nigga. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like we gonna try this nigga on every day. He'll he'll try you on any kind of avenue. Like mm-hmm. all right, he on he, he messing with Big Booty Judy. Let me let me bring this nigga in here with this money. Mm-hmm. And show him show him this. <laughs> let me let me bring this person over here with the drugs and show him this. Yeah. He gonna try any kind of way to get in. But that's when it comes back to what you were saying. If if you're rooted in the spirit and your mind is right, your soul is intact, like. You'll be able to read that. Mm-hmm. That's where that discernment of the Holy Spirit come from. Like how you saying, like I want, I want to like start hearing from Him more. He's gonna start talking to you in different ways. Sometimes right. it will be audibly, but as you as you press in more with the relationship, the relationship, He'll He'll talk to you through the word, like how you were talking about. He'll talk to you through a person at a supermarket. Mm-hmm. He'll talk to you through a TV show. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's it like, but you're hearing it in a different way than you have before. Because you you've evolved and you're connected to you, it. You're connected to yeah. it. That's yeah. how that's how a nigga can read the Bible forty eleven hundred times, and as he's continuing to mature as a man or a woman, he gets certain different. scriptures are different yeah. uh-huh. from how he was yeah. in the beginning. For sure, I can attest to that. Shit, I go back and read books I read four or five years ago, and it's like, oh mm-hmm. shit, or movies. Yeah, yeah right. Mm-hmm. Like now I'm seeing different shit. Like Horton, gives, Horton gives a who means a lot different from me. As an adult, who Horton gives a who? Like the know, doctor, man. the Doctor Seuss movie, the Doctor Seuss book. It's about it's about an elephant. It's pretty much showing you that it's more out here uh, outside than what you think the Earth is. It's mm-hmm. about this elephant. You probably seen the book because it's an elephant that picks up a flower, and the elephant looks in the flower, and it's a whole universe in it. Mm. And so this this elephant is kind of like on some like, oh my goodness, like what's going on? And they're looking at him like, what the heck is this? Like what is this? This, this is like. We supposed to worship this thing? Like, what's going on? But it's like a domino effect of seeing, like, that's how the world is. Mm. You know, like, if you look at the bigger picture of it, it's, it's showing you, like, it's more to what you're thinking your community is, mm-hmm. what your world is, right? what this universe is. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's so many different universes we probably don't even know. Facts. So it's, yeah. it's a good, when you're a kid, you're looking at those things, it's, 
it's just like a book, you know. But then as you get older, it's like, man, like they're really putting Dr. Seuss is really putting cats on game or some right, like, some like Universal really trying to make a nigga think type stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's what I mean. Like as you get older, you, certain things mean differently. Like how you were saying. Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I uh, certain songs. Food, shit. I drink. I, I I remember. I hated coconut water. Like I hated it. I hated beets. I hated beet juice. I couldn't do nothing. Beet. Hated it. Mm. As I matured, my palate started to mature as well too. The shit that was good for me was good to me, you know. But when I was eating crazy, that shit, I was like, oh, oh you know. So, yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah. Show. Sure. Yeah. Show, sure, man. For sure. Wow, we we went. We went deep. We we back. We, <laughs> <laughs> we, we went in the rabbit hole a bit, yeah, and you know I'm I'm right there with it. Whoever yeah, whoever exactly. whoever want to go down there, I'm right here, man. I see. Like, <laughs> Titus go, is ready to take trips, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so we, it can yeah. get deep. I'll pull us yes, right back sir. out. Come on, like, um, let's get it for sure. Yeah, let's go. But lining up with what we're talking about, I mean, just as you as a man with your evolution of mm-hmm. just continuing to evolve, right? Like. How does that how does that play in your lyrics? Like in 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 your 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 routine of of being an artist now. Um I wouldn't say anything has changed because I feel like just like the seed that you're talking about with Christ, that I feel like that was always there and it's more prevalent now. I think it was there with your lyrics back then. Yeah. It's just more yeah. more thought of, probably more on the surface front. Now, yeah, for sure. You know? As I told you always, one of my favorite songs from you is is off Cliff of Death. It's just a case the world ends. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's like the diary of a street nigga. Mm. Like on some like, just in case the world ends, like, yo, like, mom's still trying to get me to go to church. Like, yeah, yeah. I ain't doing that. Like, I'm right. trying to, I'm out here trying to like, homies is out here daggone in the wind, trying to put me in the wind. Mm-hmm. You think I'm, you think I'm trying to do that? I'm trying to get this bag. I'm trying to get out and then you look at the evolution of what you are now. Mm-hmm. Bag on, no, on the church. A <laughs> but then when I, 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 I've always had a, a felt I had a duty to say something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always felt that way. Like the the music that I fell in love with, they were saying something. I love rap. I never liked rap because it sounded cool and I could dance and shit to the music. Mm. I always loved rap for what it was saying. I always knew lyrics to rap music. I always knew the lyrics. I didn't just listen to the song. I learned the song. I might not have known the significance of what they were saying, yeah. but I was always infatuated with what they were saying. I always felt the duty and responsibility. So now as I get older as a man and I'm experiencing the world, I still feel that same duty to say something. Like it's it I got a song coming out of my new project, it's called Trouble. And man, God, man, it, like um I used to go to church and they used to sing this song I really liked a lot. It's uh I'm so glad trouble don't last always like that. You know, and, and that was one of my favorite songs because it just felt so good when I would hear it, you know. Mm-hmm. And um that's the new music is like it ain't god centered like on some lecrae shit but mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> i want <laughs> i want y'all to understand that god is real so even that song is like trouble don't last always i ain't believe it eyes red as a demon always plotting and scheming ready to kill for nothing i ain't even need a reason mm-hmm. living without no guidance till i ask god to lead me mm-hmm. you know and it's like I, that was all in hindsight because I'm just now asking God to lead me. Mm. But I said it then. Mm. I, 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 I can identify the music that was me and the world, and I can identify music that was a call from my spirit mm. and, and also the music that was just from a higher power. Like Sins is a song that I didn't write. Mm. It was too perfect. It wasn't for me. It was a message from something greater than me. And those songs always get out in the world and impact the way that they impact. Yeah. And sometimes you let my shit get out there too. Like New Charlotte, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm talking about feeding dick and buying food. You know, mm-hmm. like I ain't buying or nothing. I'm just feeding a dick. That was all me. That was all world shit, you know. Mm-hmm. And he let it get out there. He was like, you know what, nigga, at least it's true. 
You know, yeah, like, yeah. you feel me? So, but I've always felt that sense of responsibility and duty in the music. You know what I mean? And I can't necessarily attest to being, a, like I say, a devout Christian in my music. And I don't think I'd ever be that person in my music. It don't feel real to me mm. to get into music and then turn into damn Lecrae. I only mention him because he's the only hip hop uh, gospel person I know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put you on to so many different people, bro. Hip hop like, gospel? Yeah. Please don't. No, but no, you you'll be surprised. Well, it's, it's I, not I'm not. I, I'm just. I, okay. All right. Well, it's you not, know what? Because it's a difference. Like I, I get what you're saying, but you know, Le, Lecrae put that torch up and and ran and got shot a lot of arrows at a time. Mm -hmm. Being that pioneer to like rethink. Christian music for a lot of people that was thinking that it was it was you know quote unquote corny and in and, and a certain level I don't even listen to Lecrae I don't honestly. even well I mean this but is, I still felt that way when he made it like that's, that's I what got, I'm I understood that his ambition was to make Christian rap cool mm -hmm. but he didn't succeed I still wasn't bumping that shit it was like I ain't because that was that. the mission his, what? his mission was to just reshape how it was reshape viewed. it and I and I, and I don't want you guys to call it as corny no more but I don't think Le, Lecrae but got into did. who Lecrae was until later on and the people that I'm talking about just like yourself like they're not they're not deemed Christian um recording artists they are they are artists that are recording that are centered in Christ mm. that okay. are Christians okay that's a difference it's it's a, it's a difference between Somebody that's really doing Christ filled Christian music and being a Christian recording artist, yeah, or being a gospel singer. Right. There's a lot of gospel singers that are worshiping the devil, they're about they're about the dollar. That's a f nigga a, Snoop Dogg put out a Christian album, a and gospel album. I ain't even album, talking about secular it Catholic. It's some, it's some all Actual around Christian, like Yolanda Christian, Adams type, like shit. big, big up there, Franklin type. That, yeah. They they are just as bad as Rick Ross. Ah, oh, for with, sure. With their feeding people. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I mean, you know, we, like you say, we human. So mm -hmm. you know, pastors too. You got these pastors with these mega churches. Uh, um, it was just a pastor cop, but, but he had a fucking sex ring going on. He had like five. He had like millions of followers. He had a mega church, like a massive church. He was a Hispanic. Uh, uh, pastor, but he was running a child sex ring out of the church. Mm -hmm. He was sexually assaulting the young girls for mm -hmm. years, yeah. child trafficking, all under the guise of being a fucking, uh, fucking pastor or rabbi because rabbi is teacher. So essentially, mm -hmm. rabbi. Yeah, you know, and it, Eddie yeah, James, real big mega church guy. Before he passed away, got exposed a couple couple cats here in Charlotte, like. Exposed them for like you know touching them when it, as you know as they were working with them and under the umbrella of that mega church in Atlanta, Eddie um, so James. I, it's either Eddie James or Eddie. It's not Eddie Jones. I oh, think it's Eddie, Eddie Long. James. Is Eddie Long? Oh Did yeah, you talking about yeah the Long guy? Yeah, yeah. Eddie Long. But, yeah, I knew it was something with a yeah. I, okay, I, yeah. I, I, that's another. Topic. I ain't, I ain't gonna bring that into that, but I say yeah, that to say sure. that um, yeah, that I type of stuff has been in that in that realm for years, mm. you know. And these are people that quote unquote are are the face of Christ, Christianity mm. supposed to be, but that's that's not the face of Christianity. Mm. The face of Christianity is somebody that's transparent. Mm -hmm. It's somebody that is battling, going through things, and being transparent in what they're battling. Is telling their truth. Is telling their story. You know of you know. I don't. I don't think Chance went into making Coloring Book as a Christian project. Who? Who is that? Like Chance, Chance. the Rapper. Like I don't think he his mission was to do that. I yeah, think he you was know, in I space. think Chance the Rapper, nigga. I think Chance the Rapper out here doing a lot of shit, man. I think Chance the Rapper out here, goddamn. I don't know. Some sometimes, bro. You know, I think he was just in a space at that moment where it seemed Christ centered. Yeah. But that's not that's not considered. He's Christian not considered music. a Christian artist. Nah, not by any means. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was yeah. just in a space at that time, and I say that to say, he spoke he spoke his truth, and in doing that, the dude won a couple of Grammys off of that. But yeah. his next album was nothing Christ based. 
You know, it was more wife based. It was it was a dedication to his wife. And so I say that to say like be how however you feel in this journey that you're doing of evolving and, and getting more stronger in your faith. If Christ calls you to do that kind of album, if you feel it in your spirit to do that, then do that. Yeah, you know what I'm I mean, I, I I would never not do what's on my heart to do because mm-hmm. I don't want to be perceived as corny. I could never be corny, so yeah, I'm not I worried. <laughs> I could, bro. I could never be corny. I put out a gospel album. I would never be corny, but I don't feel called to make that kind of music because it don't feel authentic to me in this moment. Like. There's times where I'll be trying to write a gangster song, but it just don't, I ain't there. I ain't yeah. in that space and, and I don't force it. I can't, yeah. you know what I mean? So if it was on me in my spirit, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do what, you know what I'm saying? I'm being called to do. I'm going to just, that's just who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, hell no, I'd never not do some shit that's on my spirit for the sake of a motherfucker not feeling I was cool. I don't even think that's humanly possible. Mm. I'm the coolest motherfucker on the earth. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. You know? Facts, facts. Hey. Yeah. And I don't see that ever happening. Like, that but definitely wasn't what happen, I was trying never to happen. perceive in that. No, that for moment. sure. But no, that would never happen. Uh, no. No. <laughs> he said no. Hey, fuck no. no. Speaking fuck of cool, by the way, let me go ahead and put these on since you're putting those well, on. Yeah, right? yeah go ahead. <laughs> I, and, and and whoever telling you these are cool, you know what? That's your experience, man. Yeah. I'm gonna let you have it. Honestly, no one has told me that. No that one, has, cool? no one has told me that. I know they haven't. But that's that's the confidence of a real nigga. <clears throat> yeah, you know? you know what? And I'm gonna give you that because you put them bitches back on. You had them <laughs> on. <clears throat> you got out the car with them bitches on, just like. I know you wear those glasses. Like I know that. Like that's a fact. You were wearing them so confidently, you know. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, this ain't for sure. This is like what you just say with them not. with your, your layers. If you that's that's you. Like whatever you put out, it's in the goodness of your heart. Like you have a sweater with a Canadian moose on it. Yeah, and and I know that isn't by happenstance that you have this fucking sweater on. Like this, you rocking. You got your sweater on. You got your glasses on. Yeah. You didn't say I'm wearing this as of to as of late today. You said I'm wearing this today. This is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a part of you. So I, I, I ain't yeah. messing with you, yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how it's all about. Oh, yeah. I got a bone to pick with you too, about, though, man. Before oh, <laughs> don't be shit. trying to talk about about, about what yeah. oh, before yeah. before we <laughs> dive. This has been a great conversation as always. About. Um, you tricking me. Let me take my glass off for this. Oh, shit. You tricking dead me. going. <laughs> the last time I had you on here, the last time we had the narrow on here, folks, yeah. this man was talking about, yo, <laughs> I was like, yo, what do you have coming up musically? Like, is there anything else that you, nah, man, you know, you know, I, I think I'm just going to take a break from music for a while. Yeah. <laughs> that man put out like three, four EPs. <laughs> I just told you Did a you joint little uh, I still consider e- If it's more than three Bro, nigga, It's an EP I just told you I don't, I don't care I, I didn't have plans On putting that out No more music that Project I, with I, Wales Little EP with Wales What Bruh No 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 no, no. Bruh Look they put Wales name On songs He wasn't even on He was only on Retribution Yeah They tried to name They used the cover art For Retribution and tried to post it as if, look, man, I'm telling you, dog, all that music was already predestined. That shit was already recorded out and supposed to been out. I hadn't mm-hmm. done no music since then, since being, I ain't done no music since 2021, like right. 2020, 2021, whenever I was here. And I told you I wasn't putting out no music. I wasn't putting out shit. Mm-hmm. The <laughs> label obligation, they put that shit out. Because I had to fulfill my contract. But I didn't put no music out. You know what I mean? Like, I think I shot maybe two music videos for the sake of, okay, well, I mean, I like shooting music videos. So I did the one Retribution. I did No Jail with Trinidad. I did Okay. Um, great. I mean, you shoot great videos. I, You know what? I pride myself you think on of, that. Think Thank of you. great videos, like the process of it. Thank you. So, you know, I actually bossy. My cousin Bossy thought about the idea for retribution. He ride he ride four wheelers and side by sides and shit. So he really gave me the idea for that. Mm-hmm. And usually a motherfucker can't tell me nothing at all video wise. It's rare I take somebody's advice, but mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I fuck with that. You know what I mean? 
You know what I was watching last month, bro? And I didn't realize who was in that video. And it's old, like, like, cause I would work out, I work out to a lot of your stuff. Uh-huh. And I was listening to it. I was like, man, I'm gonna watch a video of this because it, it popped up on my YouTube. Yeah. It's so long. So um, long. And um, oh, it's yeah, on, it's on yeah. like Cliff of Death, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah. the people you had, the people you had in that video, bro, mm-hmm. I didn't realize Kurt was in that video, bro. Who? I go, Kurt, the baby. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He in a few of those early on videos. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he in a few of those, man. Yep. Uh huh. That's yeah. crazy. Dag on how yeah. how like you look back. I look back at videos <clears throat> like that, and it was like, dang, man, that was like early Charlotte to where it's just like you had him in there. <clears throat> I think he was probably still baby Jesus at that time. Yeah. You know what I always admired and liked about Atlanta that when I go back and watch like. um the Young Bloods video, 85. I know you waiting for God, daddy. You know what? It was T.I. driving the Cadillac. We didn't know who T.I. was. He mm. wasn't in our awareness. So it, it's those moments, man, that I always wanted to have a part of my thing. You know, so yeah. at the time when, you know, baby was baby Jesus, I knew he was coming up as an artist. I'd like for artists to be in my music video. Like, I got Lil Shaq in the, in the video for Breakdown with me, P. Frank, and my nigga magazine mm-hmm. um, from, from Treeport. Like, it, it, Shaq in that video. Like, it, 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 so I always just wanted the people to be able to go back and identify the origin of, like, yo, like, these niggas been connected. They been doing their thing. They been working. They been, you know, this city got some type of unity to it because there was no unity before. I, I can honestly say there was no unity in Charlotte, hip hop or, or rap music. It was clicks, but it wasn't no unity. I, I, I remember the city council, I believe it was called, with a royalty, uh, S Dub, King Carter, Revenue, Betty Grind. Mm. Um, I, shit, I think I might be missing somebody else, but whatever. They had like this little city council, and those were the who's of who's at the time rapping. But I know it was a lot more other niggas in the city rapping, but those were like the standout guys who band together and was like, yo, we the most visible in the city. We gonna run like that. Yeah. But I was like, nigga, fuck the visibility. You ain't gotta be visible. You dope. I like the music. We gonna rock. Come get in the video. We, 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 we gonna bring some awareness to you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have any. New Charlotte, bro, a lot of people hadn't heard of Bizzle or 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 Banks or Duru for that matter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? On a commercial level, like if you was in the city, because Duru was a part of the rap group, the Rude Boys, they used to ride around on scooters and sell their CDs. He was in, you know, some people's awareness. So I can't take that away from their hustle. Mm. Bizzle and and Banks, they were in people's awareness as far as, you know, East Side and, you know, whoever was listening to them concerned. Uh, oh, God, at the time was they click. So they did have people fucking with them. But when we did yeah, New I Charlotte, Banks, yeah. yeah, when we did New Charlotte as a collective, the awareness that came with it, nobody on that record had that, that level of awareness. Mm. And I felt proud for that. It's like, nigga, we are the first first people out the city to ever go viral for real mm-hmm. like viral trending topic on on twitter over any topic new charlotte was trending we did millions of views and and to go viral i think what well, how many million views is it to go viral we superseded that mm-hmm. twice over you feel what i'm saying and i felt good because we did that with no major feature it was all charlotte niggas on yeah. the song yeah. That motherfuckers had never heard of mm-hmm. some in the city, but definitely outside the city. It brought us into a lot of people's awareness. Yeah. So I felt good about that. And that's how I would feel having guys like the baby in the video early on. When you go look at the dealer, when me and baby shot the dealer, uh, 704 chop J way in there. You know what I mean? So if those mm-hmm. guys trajectory reach a certain point, people going to go back and look at that and be like, Oh, that's 704 child. That's J. Way Sosa. That's mm. woo woo woo. That's woo woo woo. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Hell yeah. And that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, like, yeah. looking at it like like how you said, like, with that new Charlotte, I remember that wave and I was yeah. like, I was like, I ain't been nothing. Like, cause like how you said, like, I remember the beforehand, like the the S dub and then like you said with the council and even when they did their own version of like the Forever song when that was a big that was a big <laughs> that Charlotte was, Forever. And that and then when, when Forever was a big song and they did their Charlotte Forever thing. Yeah. But it was something about um with the new Charlotte thing, man, with yeah. the with the shirts, it was just it, it was, was unity. It was just. It was just. It was awesome unity, life. bro. That's what it was about. It was Charlotte. Yeah, it, it, it was, was just a awesome new life. day. That that's what I. That's what I always felt. New Charlotte was about. It's a new day in Charlotte, bro. Mm-hmm. 
I was the guy that was shunned away from that clique, right? And, and no, okay, so our day royalty. I've known him since I was in kindergarten. Like I've I've always known him as a person. Fuck rap. He was one of the first people I told I was gonna rap. I had a job. I was working. It was CIAA. Them niggas came in to my job. I mm. was working at a restaurant downtown, and I was like, "Bro, I'm a rap." He was like, "You should, bro. I believe. Mm. Like you'll be dope." I had, he had never heard me rap or nothing. I was like, "Bro, I'm a rap." But in my mind. When I would go out to the club, I would see the local artists. I was like, but I ain't going to club. I ain't going to be them kind of rappers. I ain't going to chase radio, play. I'm going to be something different. Like, I'm going to rap from my heart. I'm going to be true. And I'm going to fuck with anybody who really fuck with me, who talented, and who yeah. deserve to be fucked with. Mm -hmm. You know, because I would approach certain artists from the city, and they'd be like, oh, shit, oh, I'm busy. Or, you know, I remember, I ain't even going to say the nigga name, but he told me like $1,200 one time for a feature. And I was like, I'm sure at that time he had never even seen $1,200 for a feature. <laughs> you feel me? Probably never have. Hmm. And um, I, I was like, bro, you know, I believed in what I had going on so much. So I said, wait, till, when I get my position, bro, I ain't never going to be like that. I'm yeah. going to fuck with niggas. You know, as long as they talented, as long as they take their craft serious, I'm going to rock with niggas. And, bro, I stayed true to that. That's where New Charlotte came from. I was I was on a major label. I was on Warner Brother when we did New Charlotte, bro. Mm. I the reason why New Charlotte is in Duru the King's name is because we didn't want to have to go through Warner to get the anime sample cleared. Mm. But I wanted to be on the song and I wanted it to be out. And I was like, well shit, they ain't gonna sue Duru if he put it out because Duru at one really, you know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't mm. a major label artist. He was doing his thing, but he wasn't like on a major scale at the time. You mm. feel me? Yeah. So I let him put it out like, fuck it, bro. You can have a song. I'm on it. You feel me? It was my song. I wrote the hook. Like, I put the whole song together, but I couldn't release it. But I was on a major platform at that time. I would pop up and go to local talent shows, support the artists. I was doing shows. Niggas weren't really paying me in the city to do shows, bro. Mm. And I was doing them anyway because I just love the culture. I just love the performance. I yeah. love the, you know. Like so, yeah, bro. That's what that shit is about. That's what you do when you genuine and you really want to see motherfuckers win, and you really just want to see it grow. You you gotta have a certain type of heart to do that, though. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying. I agree. And my heart was always in the right place with any of the artists I work with. Because truth be told, any of the artists that you named couldn't do anything for me at that mm -hmm. time when I worked with them because they wasn't. I mean, bro, they was. Barely locally known mm. for real, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so, that's yeah. facts. That's facts. Yeah, I ain't hear not one lie now. <laughs> <laughs> I see no lie. I see, I see no lie. I mean, we've had these. I mean, niggas already know that. Like, we've yeah. had these discussions out, not you, not even you. Like, this is really the first time we've had this discussion mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. But any artist that I've had on here outside of on it. Either whether it's Wales on the actual podcast or outside of the podcast, mm -hmm. they always mention your name when yeah. it talks to like being a part of that changing of the guard mm -hmm. when it comes to it being a new wave. Yeah. That is established that like that that seed was planted for the foundation to where now as you fast forward, you know, I I, I love where Charlotte is at a beautiful place where you can have a Mavi. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Where you can have a Ruben Vincent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that are in that mind frame, like how you are, like they're ha they're like that now. In the yeah, sense of like, facts. man, I want to put my young cats on and like. But that. even Ruben Vincent, like Ruben would tell me when I, when I connected with Ruben finally, and we did, you know, we did some records and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Ruben told me, like, bro, I used to bump your shit when I was young. Like I reached out to you when I was like 15. Like you know, like. Mm -hmm. Bro, I fuck with you. You feel me? I had conversations with Mavi. He told me the same thing. Like, bro, you one of the, you know, OGs of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm deeply woven in that fabric, bro, because I'm I'm one of the niggas who, bro, before rap, we, me, I was running around Hampshire Hills. You know me from that. There's so <laughs> many people yeah. who can attest to who I am and was before rap music. Mm -hmm. I was always somebody that somebody knew. I was Kevin Bacon then. You feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah. Not even on no rap shit. Yeah, I was Kevin sure. Bacon then. Yeah. I was uh, I was seeing you on every side. Bro, come yeah. on. They got all star in the city. I can go anywhere on mm -hmm. any side. Yeah. Beatty's Ford, West Boulevard, Tucker CG, Hampshire Hills, mm -hmm. Hen Valley. You bro, come on. I was Kevin Bacon then. Yeah. 
Yeah. Me and bruh see you anywhere. Come on, go, bruh. They go for all right there. Come on. <laughs> you know? And then with the rap, I, I stuck to the strip with the raps. No different. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. For sure, bro. For yeah. sure. And and that's that's one thing that I think, you know, what you know, whatever people try to because for me I always tell people like you're only as valuable as your word mm-hmm. and your heart, how you treat people. Mm-hmm. And and you'll see like how people will treat you down the line. Thanks. In certain ways. And and you're a living testament of that just like with the names that you name. I've I've never heard not one bad thing about you mm-hmm. with all like all the different artists that I've had from all different sides of town, like your name are coming without even me like telling them any kind of history that we've had. Yeah, it's been like yo, I've 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 worked with cats cats that's in Florida, where they're like I tell them I'm in Charlotte, and then they'd be like, yo man, yeah man, I used to come up to Charlotte, man. I used to be this dude like named the Nair Ferrar, man. I used to listen to when I was up there, man. Yeah. Like. I still listen to his music. Like, they don't even know. Yeah, like, they don't fact. even know, like, you the homie and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But, like, it warmed my heart to see that connection, even from, like, even if it was just for a day, mm. that man came from Florida to Charlotte and stuck with listening to you yeah. to this day. Facts. Because of yeah. that. And so it's like the name and, and how you treat people will stand the test of time, as mm. as, I, mm-hmm. as I see it as. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact. That is your legacy. Everybody want to talk about legacy. Legacy ain't nothing you can leave behind. Legacy is the impression you leave behind on people. That's legacy, bro. Mm. You feel me? Because motherfuckers are like, yeah, man, somebody got to carry on my legacy. Nobody can carry on your legacy. That's why it's your legacy, crazy man. Mm-hmm. Nobody can carry on your legacy. Your kids can't. They can never live up to that. Yeah. They're going to create their own. Everybody is their own individual legacy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. Spoken like a true G, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Talk facts. about it. True facts. It's been a great discussion, bro. Yes, sir. I'm going to wrap things up. Come on. Put a and, condom um, on it. <laughs> <laughs> I go ahead and put a condom on it, man. Come on, man. Hey, like I said, that, hey, except if you got women on here. But that should be your takeaway line. Hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, put a condom on it. Is you that know? a late? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, man. Hey, hey, hey. I might have to steal that. You can have, have that. You can, that I, hey, you know what? Edit this out so they don't know I gave it to you. You can have that, though. <laughs> That's you. That's you. I might have to take that. I Come appreciate on. it, man. Hey, wrap it up, put a condom on it. Wrapping it up, man. Like, what? what is... I ain't even gonna ask you music because you're gonna say you ain't gonna have none. And then I do. I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see, see a video underway. next week. Yeah, yeah. On. <laughs> I got some. I got a project on the way. I'm, I'm dropping first quarter, bro. I'm excited about this too. So, Ooh, yeah. okay. Hey, first hey. quarter. Come on. That's, that's right around mm-hmm. the corner. Hey, it's three months in the first quarter. So, mm-hmm. you know, I got some time, but I'm dropping first quarter on the ass. That's what's up. Yeah, that's, that's what's fact. up, man. Mm-hmm. How was the one thing I wanna ask before we got here? How was the tour with, with Curry, man? Uh-oh. When we talk about. Uh, Going back to what we were just saying, just holding your name mm-hmm. in the sense of like that will stand the test of not te- stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. I would see that relationship being a li- uh, perfect example of that because mm-hmm. you you're talking about somebody from the bow down days, mm-hmm. you know, South by Southwest, mm. where that that camaraderie is still there to where you be like, yo, I see y'all working out together. I see like y'all going on tour, mm-hmm. and it's just like how not only how was that tour. But how is it still having a camaraderie with somebody that is considered an industry person? Because, uh, you know, I talk to industry people and a lot of people say, you know, real people in the industry is far in between. Um, Denzel Curry ain't a part of that world. Mm. He never been. You know what I'm saying? He's not a part of that world. So I don't. I don't His I don't music is just so great. It just makes him a part of it. I would say. I, I mean, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely had a lot of commercial success. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But he ain't a part of that world. He's not that person at He's all. He's like period. what DMX said. I'm not an industry rapper. I'm a rapper in the industry. Uh, well, you know, I don't know DMX, but I mean, that sounded cool. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, but I can attest to who Denzel Curry is. And he ain't. He ain't no industry guy. Bro, we on tour playing Uno and shit. Yeah. Like, bro, that dude is the furthest thing from them niggas in the industry, bro. I would imagine if you chill. Oh, my God, bro. He's the furthest thing from the fucking industry. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so, I mean, it was great. I'm older now. You know what I mean? I'm finna be 36. So all that goddamn moving around, hotels, buses out there. You know, I'm getting grumpy and shit. Like, mm-hmm. nigga, what the fuck? Sit down. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm on the bus, niggas up and down and drinking and hey, man, fuck all that. I'm finna go to the room. I'm 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 leaving the tour. I'm literally leaving the show before everybody. I'm back at the hotel from the Uber. I done ate. I got a crock pot in my room. I'm making food. <laughs> I'm <laughs> You know, I'm grown as hell. I got kids. Yeah. Don't nobody else on the Face tour got the kids. kids well, except Denzel DJ. I believe he the only other person. Uh, Posh just had a little girl. She probably about one. But uh, other than that, man, I mean, we was cooling, bro. You know what I mean? Exercising every day. Uh, I was paid to come on the road originally as his personal trainer. Mm. So that's how I got on the road. And then, you know, of course, I'm like that on the stage. And bro was like, nigga, come on. Mm. So, you know, it's. Now I, I, I'm I'm operating out of two mediums. Yeah, that wham wham. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was beautiful. It was a blessing, man. I I visited Europe. I hadn't been to Europe since maybe 2018. Mm. So, you know, we spent damn near a little over a month in Europe. So I'm in Europe living my best life, really enjoying yeah, yeah, the I spent world. A minute there. Man, wow. I was ready to go. I can't even hold you. I was ready to go. Got back to the States and I was ready to go home. But, you know, he was on the road for another couple months. You know what I'm saying? So. It was a blessing, bro. Seeing the world, getting paid to do it, having new experiences, fan base growing. I mean, what more can you ask for? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Dope, man. Yeah. Dope. That's what it's all about, man. Mm-hmm. Nair Ferrari, y'all. Standing yes, the test of time, man. Continuing to grow. Legacy is already cemented. It's just going to continue to evolve. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's been an honor having you as always, man. Yeah. My pleasure, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This is sure. as of late. What a kind of moment. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>